Hey, today we're on a road trip. We can't go into the studio because there's a private event uh, that is going to preclude us opening. So we said, you know, screw that. We're going to go out and have a lovely day. See where we end up. Come along with us. Hi, I'm John, and this is Bogdan. Join us on our journey as we figure out how to earn a living as artists, introduce you to those we meet, and share what we learn along the way. Well, it's a beautiful day here in Central Texas. We were supposed to go in today and open up the studio for our open day, but the uh, building was closed for a private event, so we had to make other plans. And we decided just to take a road trip. It's, uh, the birds are chirping, the flowers are blooming, uh, the trees are budding. It's, it's just a beautiful time to be out and about. And it's been so long since we've been able to get out and, and do things because of COVID and, and the restrictions. So it's, it's a lovely, lovely experience for us. Uh, we've come to Brenham, Texas, where we are now. And uh, Brenham has a beautiful historical district full of, of little of curio shops and little art galleries. And uh, so we've been spending some time hanging out with the art crowd here in Brenham. Uh, taking advantage of some of the beautiful mural art that they have around town. They have a real commitment to the arts in this community and so we're very lucky to be here. Right now I'm sitting on the campus of Blinn Junior College and uh, it's just a lovely, lovely day out. I think it's really important for all of us to, to be able to work outside of our studios. Uh, we, we get so so used to working alone and particularly during all of the pandemic uh, we've been kind of walled up in our own studios it's important to get out there and meet other people get seen uh, we're taking cards if some of these uh, art, sh art uh, galleries are accepting consignment uh, you, you just never know who you're going to meet uh, it's, it's, it's all part of the the art business is to to interact with other people so we're having a lovely day and uh, we're gonna take you along with us. Last week we talked about the importance of organizing your business processes. And hopefully you've gotten that all under control by now. Wouldn't that be great? If you could fix all your small business problems that easily. Just make an adjustment or two and all your organizational challenges go away. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. So we should be content to do the best we can and appreciate small changes when they come along. Today I want to build on last week's progress and talk about some ideas about organizing and keeping up with all the crazy paperwork that small businesses can require. I had a friend who ran a flower shop years ago. And she placed all of her purchase receipts, all of her sales receipts in a metal trash can at the top of the stairs at her store. When I asked her about it, she explained that the government required her to keep records, but with no specific details. She had all the receipts in the can, but with no internal organization at all. Her theory, was that if the IRS decided to audit her business, they would have to look through the entire trash can's content of paper. It was never really clear to me if she thought that that might make them give up and leave her alone, but I can't imagine that would have worked. <clears throat> Though she may have been technically legal in the way she kept her records, she had almost zero understanding of how her business was functioning, other than a hunch. And I guess that her hunches were probably pretty good, but I could never survive with that degree of disorder in my business. Not only would the lack of order creep me out, but I would want to know all sorts of things about my business, how it's performing, and how much money is going in and out. 
I mentioned last week that I hire an accountant to do all my bookkeeping and taxes. But even the accountant doesn't record data to the degree that I want. So I keep a separate spreadsheet and a filing system apart from what my accountants produce so that I can get specific answers to questions that Bogdan and I have about our business. If you're interested in seeing that spreadsheet, I have a sign-up sheet available on my website. Just go to johnbishopfineart.com and look for the tab called Giveaway. Drop me your name and email and I'll forward you the template. It's something that I created over many years. And while I'm not suggesting that my system is better than yours, I do know that I wish I would have had some sort of guide like that when I was just starting out. Whatever system you use, it's important that you keep detailed records and can retrieve those records for you and for your accountants, or if you were to be audited by the IRS. My accountant suggests that I hold on to my paper records for three years, but I know the IRS suggests something like five or seven years. You might want to check with your bookkeeper to see what they recommend. Apparently, if you have the physical records, the IRS can request as much as you've got. So there is some rationale for not keeping records that you're not required to keep. I organize my records into three main categories, expenses, business documents, and customers. Now each one of those groups has its own file cabinet drawer. I keep the business documents forever just because they're permanent records of running my business legally. The expenses, I track by categories, and I keep those receipts in a folder all year. And at the end of the year, I transfer the paper receipts into a plastic box that I store for three years. Now, when it comes to customer files, I purge them annu annually too, but there's an added step I take with them. I assign a customer number to each. And whenever I have a job with anyone, I create a project number for that job. That way, in my spreadsheet, I can track all of the jobs I've done with any particular customer and or I can track any income or costs associated with that particular job. Does that make sense? So if I get a job with Mary Smith to do a, a commissioned photo of her home, I can code anything to do with that job, including my gasoline, my printing expenses, framing, etc., to that particular job and file it in her particular folder. Then I just paperclip or staple all the receipts and invoices, etc., that have to do with that specific project together and keep them inside Mary's folder. Of course, I enter all of this in the spreadsheet as well so I will always know where I have filed all my receipts and so that I can do my own numbers without needing to go to the files. The spreadsheet allows me to track all of my expenses, income, deposits, invoices, profits, sales tax obligation instantly. I keep the spreadsheet on my Google Drive so I have access to that information anytime and anywhere I might be. The system works really well for us though it has taken me several years to figure out the kind of reporting I need to stay organized. Okay, okay, too boring, I get it. But it is important that you have a system in place to organize your record keeping. And hopefully, you'll decide not to just throw it all in a garbage can and wait until New Year's Day. You know, in addition to this weekly vlog, I write a blog and do a video podcast every week as well. Now, Bogdan and I have started doing a weekly live presentation featuring our art. The show is called Art Chat with John and Bogdan. Every Thursday morning at 11 o'clock Central Time here in the USA. The show lasts for 30 minutes and takes place on Zoom. We'd love to have you join us. The login information is the same every week and I'll make sure to put that in the description section below. So get out there and enjoy the springtime as much as you can. Then get your nose back in your files. 
Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.